On today's episode, I'm going to navigate how manifesting can be a practice that helps us bypass the present. Welcome to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast. I am your host, Luis Mujica. I was sick and depressed until I discovered that I could make music, and then my whole life transformed because I began learning how to listen more deeply. Listen to life, to the people around me, and to my body. And that's when I realized that the body speaks through sensations, and learning this new language meant relearning my body and mind. I soon healed myself of many chronic conditions and then began teaching others how to do so as well. Holistic life navigation combines nutrition, self-inquiry, and somatic experiencing to help you release stress and trauma just by listening to your own body. This podcast serves as a place to share my experiences as well as the experiences of many others who have healed and are healing through unique, unorthodox, and unusual ways. Your time to learn begins now. Whenever I orient to a desired future, I leave my reality. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but it has helped me to realize this is happening because instead of focusing on desire, I've learned to focus on and nurture my capacity. I can orient toward a future desire all I want. I can even get it. But do I have the capacity to handle it? I've seen many people attain everything they desired, but their nervous systems didn't have the capacity to withstand the charge, and so their bodies rejected it, and they called it self-sabotage or unworthiness. In my experience, it's neither of those things. It's simply that a body filled with too much charge must reject any new charge, positive or negative, until it integrates what it's already carrying. Someone wrote me today, una amiga boricua, and she asked my opinion on how living in the future affects us now. Living in the future can give us a dopamine hit to withstand the now. I remember plenty of times when I was in a stressful or even boring situation and I would fantasize about a better future. Then I began noticing that the fantasy was successfully keeping me from experiencing the boring experience. And the now, that experience, is where I build my capacity, not the future. Now I've realized that things just come into my life all the time without me having to manifest or work hard for them. New people, new opportunities, new emotions. It's just the way of life. It's ever-changing and ever-growing. So when, I f- when my focus is on my current capacity, not my future desires, I'm actually building the capacity to tolerate and enjoy what inevitably comes, whether that be stress or ecstasy. Sit with this and see where it takes you. Notice how manifestation can keep you from building capacity for your current life, and how, by doing that, the very things we want and eventually get don't land well in our bodies because we simply haven't been in them. Now, what I mean by all this is not that uh, manifesting is good or bad. What, what, I, what I think I mean when I'm talking about manifestation is the practice of attuning to a future, the practice of focusing on what do I want instead of what do I have. Now, wanting and desiring and even um, imagining something in the future just to light yourself up or to explore is a gorgeous, a gorgeous experience. It's part of the hallucinogenic experience of having a mind and a nervous system. We can think things and we feel them, so we get transported. What's beautiful about this is when we're doing it in an embodied way. If I'm imagining going to the beach right now, I'm loving that fantasy. I am seeing the waves, I'm smelling the salt, I'm feeling that feeling when the sun is just in your bones, and I love it. And then when I come back to my reality right now as I'm speaking to you, I feel that my feet are cold, my windows are open, it's like 65 degrees out, there's a beautiful creek flowing through the forest next to my cottage. And it's a completely different somatic experience. There is no sunshine in my bones. I don't smell salt. There is no beach. There's no sand. Yet there's something else here. 
There's a feeling of being held by the mountain and the trees. There's a coolness that activates me and wakes me up. There's a sense of peace watching and hearing the water moving. So there's a different experience here that I'm feeling in my body. What I've come to find when it comes to manifesting or even having the capacity to withhold or experience something new and big and beautiful that we want is that capacity builds up to that point. So if I'm going to the beach on Wednesday, which I am, and I think about, um, all I'm, let's say all I'm thinking about is going to that beach. It's all I want to do. Between now and Wednesday, I'm missing these little moments where my body gets to communicate and relate to the land I live on now. These little precious um, experiences and opportunities to connect to what's happening right here as I breathe. And when this becomes an unconscious habit of attuning to the future, it can become a trauma response, a way to bypass present experiences. Again, this is not a bad thing. I can think of plenty of times where I was in a really uh, dangerous or threatening or abusive situation, and the thought of a better future gave me capacity for that situation. So in this one way, it contradicts what I'm saying. If we notice that attuning somewhere for more capacity for the present is um, a resource, I think it's a brilliant way to resource. The difference there with that practice is I'm orienting to a future to create space in me now so that I can take that space to my present rather than orienting to the future and never relating to my present. Does this make sense? Let's just sit with it and feel it for a moment. Really notice how your mind might orient to the future or your vision board or your manifestation journal whatever it is that you want in your life. Notice how much time your body spends in that place instead of in your current experience. If you want to take this work deeper into your lives, I strongly recommend joining my next six-week course. It begins on Monday, July 25th. There are three sessions every week for six weeks and they're all live. Everyone gets a replay? And you learn how to heal stress and trauma through nutrition, herbalism, somatic experiencing, and self-inquiry. We meet three times a week for the six weeks. All the meetings are live and everyone gets a replay. So even if you can't make it live, you'll still be able to watch and review. You'll have support Monday through Friday from me and my staff as you navigate the emotions and physical sensations that come up through this work. You'll even have options for one-on-one -on -one support. And we have a global community of students participating in this who will also be supporting you on our private online space called Circle. For more information on this course, visit holisticlifenavigation.com. Registration opens on June 30th, and make sure to register for the free Q&A session on that day so you can learn about this work and have some of your questions answered. I'll see you then. And what I personally love, and this practice is not for everybody, but I really love finding the joy in situations that seem like there's no room for joy. The death of someone I love, losing all my money, getting really sick with COVID, experiences that seem really negative and horrible. In those moments, how can I attune to something wonderful? And this isn't to bypass. We talk about this a lot in my membership space. Attunement to something beautiful amidst pain, amidst um, violence or trauma or grief, isn't to bypass the violence or trauma or grief. It's to hold both. And it takes me right into the practice, the somatic experiencing practice of pendulation where we identify in our bodies, okay, there's the anxiety in my chest. Oh, and there's also a comfort in my feet. And we identify these opposite states within us so we can be with both. If I only orient toward the anxiety in my chest, I lose the rest of my body that has some space, that has some capacity 
to even be with the anxiety as it erupts. However, if I'm able to notice my feet are calm and I pendulate up and down between those two, I start to notice, oh, there's some capacity for this anxiety. And the anxiety doesn't take me over. This same principle is what I'm applying to this contemplation on manifesting as a way to bypass. I'm looking at my desired future and I'm feeling how good that feels. Can I bring that good feeling back to my present? Can I find good feelings in my present? Some of you hearing this might think, no way. You know, you might be in a job you hate or a relationship that's painful. Or you might have a physical illness or ailment that's really, um, really uncomfortable or limiting. So the obvious would be, no, nothing's good about this. And if we get really still and we look around, especially using our bodies and we feel into them, we can start to notice what right now feels okay. I was very sick with COVID and my entire body from my head to my toes was just in so much pain. And no amount of stretching or yoga or breathing would get rid of the pain. So what I did was I noticed what parts of me are okay with the pain. What parts of my body are not constricting? What parts are open? And I found like my stomach was open, my legs were open, my shoulders were open. So I laid in bed just just uh, indulging in these open places that also had pain. And it was quite a, a transformative experience. I went in and out of sleep many times, but I got this deep rest even in a place of pain and fever and illness because I was attuning to what parts were okay being there. I wasn't attuning to getting better. I didn't once visualize me being healthy and well, which I have done in the past, but I was really trying to practice my own teachings and see how it felt. And it was amazing to be in so much pain and nausea and have a fever and just not be able to even move, to have such fatigue, and to be in a place of peace with that. Why was this okay for my body? And the medicine of deep rest and of letting go and of not getting on the phone and not taking care of bills and not doing any of my business work, it was such a wonderful settling feeling, even amidst the pain, because I needed the pain to stop me. The pain was the medicine that was saying, just lay here and let yourself float. So that was a moment where I didn't use manifestation or visualization to bypass the experience. I was with the experience. And then what's so beautiful is as I was getting better with each new experience, I didn't have the threat of pain anymore. I didn't fear getting more sick because I felt really comfortable with being sick. And I've found that this practice can be applied to everyday life, whether it's a um, a traffic jam, or you're having an argument with a friend or a lover, or the meal you wanted was not available on the menu, <laughs> you know, big or quote, big or small problems, just noticing, okay, this is a moment to build capacity for my reality. Instead of using the practice of orienting to the future to bypass my reality until it's over. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is the word capacity. I'm going to bring in that term and that awareness. Sometimes we don't have the capacity to withhold or somatically experience our present. And that's when orientations and visualizations and affirmations are beautiful resources. Leaving our present sensationally through dissociation, through fantasy, through manifesting, trying to visualize a future is... Um, an innocent and fine strategy when we lack capacity for the present. What I want to offer us, those of you listening, is if you find yourself doing that, if you notice, oh, right now I'm bypassing my reality for the future I want, notice somatically where you feel the future you want. When you think of that thing you want, where do you feel it in your body? And can you bring that sensation to your present as an anchor? so that you can be with your present, so that, that the future concept lends you capacity for the present. I find that to be a beautifully integrated way to not bypass the present, but instead relate to the feelings you get from the future in your present. 
And lastly, when we build this capacity in the present and we have a lot of space in our bodies, manifestation becomes just breath. That's it. You just notice as you're breathing, everything's manifesting all the time. It's not about, I need to go out and get it and put my flag in it. Like that kind of like dominating idea of like, go get your life, go grab it. For me, it turns into, wow, I'm one little particle of billions of particles in this universe. Things are always moving through me and out of me and through others and out of others. And if I'm open enough and I'm in my body and I'm settled enough, when those things come through, the beautiful and the brutal, I have the space in me to be able to actually relate and connect to it. So I thank you for listening to me today. And I always love to hear where this goes. You know, feel free to find me on Instagram and send me a message and comment. Or you can go to my website, holisticlifenavigation.com. And you can find um, an area to send us messages, a contact area. Love to hear where this work takes you and what emerges for you. And my next six-week course begins on July 25th. On June 30th, I'll be hosting a free webinar about somatic and healing uh, trauma somatically. So if you're interested in that, you can join the webinar for free. And I'll speak a bit about the course in that webinar as well. Thank you for being here. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. My question for you is, where do you feel the episode? Take a breath and just notice. What's your body doing right now? Sit with it. Let it speak to you. And let whatever comes up, come up. And your only job is to listen. For all the wisdom you need is right inside of you. To learn more about my work, you can visit holisticlifenavigation.com and sign up for my mailing list. You'll receive a weekly newsletter with specific monthly topics, free resources, and upcoming events. You can also follow me on Instagram. If you like my podcast, please leave a review and share. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.